Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Carol Miranda and I am the Spark Aligners Clinical Manager. Today, I will walk you through the process to review a case using the approved software. Remember that when doctors are using both Spark Aligners cases or OTP cases, they only need to use the approved software. This is the approved software and I will walk you through the buttons that we have to review cases for Ormco Digital Bonding and Spark Aligners. Let's start by talking about the upper main toolbar. These first four buttons that we have here are enabled because this is an OTB case. If this was an Spark Aligners case, I will see all the rest of the buttons, but not these four. Let me start with the first one, which is the wire plane. This wire plane helps me to see where the brackets are going to be positioned. And this tool allows me to show and hide the wire plane. And by using these control points in the front or in the back, I can adjust the wire plane position. The next button is the brackets. It will just toggle or show and hide the brackets. The third button is the wire plane and it is a representation of a daemon stock wire. We can see it in the upper and in the lower as well. And let me show you some options that you have to play with it. We can show and hide the midline. You see between the central teeth, we have this midline marker. You can show or hide it. Another thing that we have implemented with this wire plane is that you see that for some brackets there are orange lines, green lines, and also there could be a red line, like in this case. And what that means is the wire slot is not going to fit perfectly into the slot. So we can adjust it with two options. One option could be to change the position of the teeth to try to make it fit within the bracket slot. And the other option that I have is to move the wire plane out or in as needed just to make sure that all these points are going to be green. If they are not green, what it means is that your final position may be slightly different from the planned position or the other option is that you may need to do some slight wire bends in the wire. The next button is the jigs but currently it is grayed out because I have not finished the setup. I will cover that in a moment. The next tools are basically for spark aligners cases, but also they have some use for ODB. This is the features button and if it was a spark case, you will be able to show and hide the attachments, the byte drums, the byte turbos, and also the integrated hooks or any features related to the aligners. But because this is an ODB case, it will help me to show and hide the brackets. The next button is the arch form. This arch form is helpful when I am defining the T2 position. And for example, if I want to make a more parabolic arch form, I can edit the position of the teeth by using these control points. The next tool is the IPR tool. It will show me the interproximal contacts or the spaces, if there are. I can also add IPR, remove it by clicking on the X or add a spacing to the final position of the teeth if needed. The next tool is the occlusal contacts. It will show the collisions between the upper and the lower teeth. Following, we have the tooth numbering, the grid, the superimposition will help me to see a comparison between the initial and the final position of the teeth. With this tool, I can show and hide the roots of the teeth. This next tool here, here is the overcorrection and for spark aligners cases, if I have a C-chain, I can show or hide the C-chain by using this tool. Similarly, if I have Pontix, I can show and hide them with this one or a bite correction, which is like a simulation of class two elastics. The next tool, the gingiva. I can show and hide the gingiva on the teeth. 
And the final box of this main toolbar is the CVCT. On the right hand of the screen, I have the preset views, and this is just to position the model in different views. Now let's go to the upper right side of the screen. Some buttons that we have here are the export movie. This allows you to send um, a small movie of the position that you are showing on the screen to a patient or to a colleague. The PDF is going to be different for Spark Aligners cases and for ODB. For Spark Aligners cases, it will show you the features and the IPR. And for ODB cases, on the first page, we will see the brackets prescription, whether you are using Daemon Ultima Procline, if it was if you see a red dot, or Daemon Ultima Retrocline, if you see a green dot. The second page is going to be the jigs, but right now we have not configured them, so you will see how the jigs are positioned. On the third page of the PDF, you can see the interproximal reduction. In the following page, you can see the tooth path deviation. If there is any problem with um, if the tooth path is not totally adapted to the tooth, you will see that over here. Then the wire slot deviation in different points. And the last page is just like the part details. So this is the PDF. Then we have the compare model. This allows us to compare different revisions of the, of the case. The settings, just general information about the appearance of the features. If you want to change the colors, the controls, if you want to change the, the compass line width and some shortcuts. Going down this page, we have the properties and these properties are, are going to tell us the information for a feature that we click on it. For instance, if I click on this bracket, it is going to show me the properties for this bracket or if it was an attachment, it is the same. The case details, the tooth movement table is going to show us the movements that are considered to be more challenging and the ones that are considered to be moderate. We have here the bolt-on analysis to determine any tooth size discrepancy. And then this final tool here is going to help me to undo any action. And now let's talk about the tooth movements and the brackets. If you want to make changes to the final tooth position, you can click on a tooth and select one of the compasses that we have to do so. The first compass is to maintain the root position and just move the crown. The next one is the bodily movement. The third one is to keep the root, the crown and just move the root. And the fourth compass is the hinge movement. So if you want to keep, let's say, the distal part of the tooth and just rotate the mesial in, you can use this compass. You will notice that as soon as you change a tooth position, the bracket is going to turn red. And the reason for that is that this bracket needs to be re-snuggled. Just click on this button and you will notice that it will turn gray again. There are some situations in which the brackets are going to remain red, but this is not a limitation. You can continue working on the case. There are some instances where we are going to see the orange brackets and similar to a spark aligners cases, when we see orange attachments, this means that these brackets collides with another tooth and I can see this under properties on the right side of the screen. It says that these brackets collide with tooth number 15 and it is also letting me know if this happens at the beginning or if this happens at the end of the treatment. I see this happens on stage zero. So these brackets is colliding with this tooth at the beginning of the treatment. If I decide to, I can adjust the bracket but bear in mind that changing the position of the brackets may alter the final outcome. If you decide to maintain the bracket as it is, because this is not a limitation, you can just consider adding some bite turbos to prevent this collision. You can do this during the bonding appointment. 
A few more things that I want to mention about the brackets is that some, sometimes you will see the brackets have a red dot when this is a procline bracket or a green dot when it is a retrocline bracket or some brackets may not have a dot at all and that means that they are neutral Daemon Ultima brackets. You can edit this in the prescription if you want to by clicking on the, on the bracket and changing this. So I can change my procline bracket to retrocline bracket or I can just make the brackets neutral if I want to. In some instances, if I decide that I want to extract the tooth to resolve the crowning, I can click on a bracket and just click on remove. And this bracket is going to be removed from this tooth because it is going to be extracted. And that's what I wanted to share with you about the brackets. Take a look at the left side of the screen. In this panel, we have the following options. The first one is the prescription form where you can see all the instructions and the indications that were sent for the designer. The second button is the photos. Here we can see the patient intra and extra oral photos and they can be zoomed in or zoomed out as well as the radiograph. The next button is the communication between the doctor and the technician. And this following button is going to be different whether you are working on spark aligner cases or in ODB cases. For spark aligners cases, we will see the auxiliaries like the attachments, the bite ramps, posterior bite turbos, or the cutouts. But because this is an ODB case, we have the following option. The first one is to compute the wire plane. And remember, this will indicate where the brackets are going to be positioned. By default, the wire plane is at the FA point because this is how the Daemon Ultima brackets are designed. Once we have computed the wire plane, the second option is to compute the bracket placement. And the third option is the bracket selection. Here you can see all the bracket prescription that were indicated for each tooth on the right and the left side in the maxillary as well and in the mandibular. And you can also see the tubes that were requesting for the first and the second molar. And the last options that I have here in the auxiliaries is to create the jigs. At this point, I want to highlight that if you remember, we were going to extract this tooth and this tooth does not need a bracket. That is why it will not have a jig. Now I can click on apply and the software is creating the group jigs for both arches. I want to highlight that if the doctor wants to focus only on making changes to the final tooth position, that is perfectly fine. It is not necessary that the doctor does the compute wire plane, compute bracket placement, and the jigs. These are things that the technicians are well trained to do when they receive the case so the doctor can only focus on making changes to the final tooth position and we will take care of the rest. However, we offer you all these options if you decide that you want to make any edits. And now I have the jigs grouping calculating here for the upper arch and for the lower arch. And again, see that the tooth that is going to be extracted does not have a jig. I can also see this on the PDF report on the second page. I can see here the grouping of the jigs and in, with this button on the upper main toolbar, I can show and hide the jigs for upper and lower. And in this left side panel, the last button that I have is the CVCT. So if you have a loaded a DICOM file, it will be visible here. And now let's talk about CBCT. To open the DICOM file, you can go to the settings and default this option when importing the DICOM. You can select ask to import. So when you open the case, there will be a dialogue asking if you want to uh, import the CBCT or you can do that automatically or manual. If you do it manual, then you will have to go every time to the upper left side of the screen 
and click on Open DICOM from Archive. Let's take a look at the options that we have to review the CBCT. The first one is the volume. With the volume, you can edit the opacity of the CBCT and also the quality. We have some preset options for the mapping. The first one is full scroll. We have contrast roots, opacity, hard tissues, You can see here like the profile of the patient, just the skin, the translucent skin, which is like a combination of the hard tissues and the soft tissues, and bone and soft tissue. We also have a functionality that is called auto crop. So if you just want to focus on the maxilla or in the mandible, you can use this tool and with using these control points, you can select the area that you want to visualize. You can do it manually, like this example, or you can also just use the auto crop functionality and the scope will be cropped like this. So you can use the auto crop or you can crop it manually using the control points. The next tool that we have here in the volume is the show collisions. So this tool is going to show you the roots in red when they are in collision with the cortical bone. And also if they are in inside the paranasal sinuses or the incisive canal in the palate. So this is again the show roots collision. Functionality with the CBCT. Then we have the slice section. In this slide section, you can compare the initial tooth position with the final tooth position. And you can show the volume to see the full skull or hide it. And also for the tooth numbering, you can have them visible or the, all the time or just on hover. As you click on a tooth, you will see the tooth numbering. And we have different directions for this slice. We have the mesial distal that allows you to go from the right side to the left side. And in real time, you can make changes to the teeth. For instance, if I am here on this central incisor and I notice that they are going outside the cortical bone, I can click on this tooth and move it back to make sure that this tooth is within the cortical bone. And also I have the actual view that allows me to scroll up and down and see where is the cortical bone and where is the tooth position. For instance, I can also see the apex of the teeth. And if I want to move them back, I can click on the teeth and just move them back as needed. I can see also the coronal plane and this coronal plane, I can go from the back of the teeth to the front. And this is something that I like to use when looking at the curve of Wilson to know if the expansion that I am doing is within the cortical bone or not. If I can do more expansion, I can select the teeth and do more expansion if needed. Or if I want to level the curve of Wilson, this is a good tool that I can use to visualize this. I can keep it parallel to a screen, which is easier. And then I have the some advanced controls that allows me to change the brightness and the contrast of this view. And basically these are the tools that I have for CVCT. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and find it helpful. Thank you and have a great day.